Grace and peace to you in fullest measure. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us rejoice and be glad indeed. Just a note, um, I am COVID negative, but I do have a little rhinovirus, so I'm going to wear a mask today for you all. I don't want to share my germs. Um, We'll have communion, but I won't serve the bread one of the elders will serve the bread so that we can all relax and enjoy our week next week. Uh, We have a few announcements. Uh, Tavita's discharge date will be Friday. Um, And I want you to know that she is cheerful and communicative and would welcome visitors this week. Of course, she's having a few memory problems, but uh, that doesn't mean she won't be a wonderful conversation partner as usual. Um, And they are in the process of equipping their home for her return on Friday. Also, in your bulletin, you will find a flyer that looks like this. We have... um, ordered a hundred copies of this Advent devotional book. So as a congregation, we will engage in Advent devotions together for those who are interested. I think you'll find this to be simple, short, and engaging. And uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this with you all during the Advent season. In the traditions of the church, Advent lasted six weeks. And so Advent begins a little bit sooner than you might expect, and you can hear this in our scripture texts coming up. They are not uh, warm and cozy. They are a herald of Christ's return. And so this is one of those times when you need to put on that crash helmet and buckle in to your pew to know that uh, we've got some mighty passages ahead of us between now and Mary's Magnificat, which will come, but it's a ways off. If you would please sign in the register that you find in your pew, that will help us keep account of who was here. And also, if you're with us on Zoom, just put your name in the chat, and then we'll have a record of your attendance. Immediately following worship, we'll have the nominating committee. The Christ-forming household will meet at 6 tomorrow, and the women's circle at 7. And there may be a worshiping household meeting tomorrow as well. If you're on the worshiping household, please check your email. The prayer shawl group will meet on Tuesday, as will the grief group. And then on Wednesday, there's yoga. On Thursday at 10 o'clock, the Taize setup team will meet to clean the candlesticks and trim the wicks of our candles. Um, At noon on Friday, the stewardship committee will meet on Zoom, and at one o'clock on Friday, the gift of years study group will meet in the fellowship hall. We have our last children's and adult Sunday school class next week. And uh, please note that the requiem that had been scheduled for next Sunday has been postponed until 2013. No, 23, yes. (laughs) That's why I have help. Yes. Who knows what was happening in 2013? I don't know. We will begin our formal Advent season on Saturday, November 26th at 10 a.m. 
with the hanging of the greens. If you are tall, we especially request your presence with us. And then finally, uh, our Advent breakfasts and devotionals will begin the next day on the 27th. One final note, if you did not open your electronic courier from last week, you have missed an absolute multitude of beautiful photographs of trunk or treat and our uh, anniversary celebration. So if you haven't seen those photos, please, you will enjoy every single one of them, and I encourage you to rejoice and celebrate in seeing our church family enjoying one another. Any additional announcements? Let us worship God. Please stand and join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Sing to the Lord a new song. Let us join all the saints to praise God. Sing to the Lord a new song. invite you to be seated. Friends, remember you have been baptized and made a child of God 
let us give thanks. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of water and the gift of life. Quench our thirst for your living water, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, poured out upon us in baptism, let your grace and peace grow in us, and let God's people say, Amen. As part of our All Saints Sunday tradition, we light candles now for all the saints who have gone before us since the church was first founded in 1971 up until our service last year, 2021. And those who have died since uh, include David Davis and Jimmy Day. And I invite Barbie and Celia, Cecilia to come forward now to light candles in remembrance of David and Jimmy. For David and Jimmy, their baptism is complete, and they have joined that great cloud of witnesses. God's mercy extends from generation to generation, keeping us in life and in death and in life everlasting. Together, let us seek God's forgiveness using the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. God of the ages, we remember the saints who have gone before us. We are grateful for their witness and humbled by their example. Though they have marked well the path of faithful, following in the ways hard for us, we drift and waver, we resist and rebel. Remind us that the saints before us were not perfect, just forgiven, and saved by grace. We ask for that forgiveness, and we pray for the courage to trust in that grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. inheritance of all the saints and the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Friends, trust in this good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share Christ's peace.
Daniel is an example of apocalyptic literature or writing about end times. Other examples of apocalyptic literature include The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells or The Birds, you know, the movie by Alfred Hitchcock. Today's apocalyptic literature published in film that quoted Becky's pun, not mine, <laughs> um, since 1805, about the middle of the first industrial revolution. Prior to 1805, outside of the biblical Belshazzar of Babylon. Daniel had a dream and visions in his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Let us read Psalm 149 responsibly <coughs> as printed in full. Praise God. Sing to our God a new song. Give praise in the assembly of the faithful. Praise, praise God's name with thanks. <laughs> Make it gladly to God with tambourine and heart. For you take delight in your people, O God. You, you adore the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let their rest let them sing for joy. Let the high praises of God be on their lips, and two-edged swords in their hands. To drink vengeance on all that is wicked, and chastisement on all injustice. To bind what is evil with fetters, and oppression with chains of iron. To, to carry, carry out the justice of God for your name. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Praise God. Our epistle reading comes from a letter to the Ephesians, attributed to Paul, but probably written by one of his followers. Listen for what the Spirit is saying. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head of, over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. <coughs> the word of the Lord.
I invite the children to come forward. heard the choir sing a beautiful anthem and they said Jesus was here in this very room do you see him but he's still here wow you know who else is here that we can't see God very good absolutely God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And there's someone else here that we can't see called the communion of saints. Can you say that? Communion of saints. Very good. Very good. Who, who is that? Well, the communion of saints is made up of everyone who has gone before us. For example, all of the people that have ever loved you who are in heaven, all the people who have ever loved your mom and dad who are in heaven, all the people who loved your grandparents or your great-grandparents, or your great-great-grandparents, and everybody who's ever worshipped here, they're part of the communion of saints. And did you know that the communion of saints pray for you? They do. They do because they love you, too. So, if you're feeling lonesome or puzzled, you can say, God, send the communion of saints to keep me company. It's a, it's a mystery. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are with us and for us no matter what. And we thank you for the communion of saints who pray for us and encourage us and keep us company. Amen. As we celebrate together All Saints Sunday, it might be a good thing to keep in mind or revisit what it means to be a saint. With many things, it depends on who you ask. If you ask a Roman Catholic, a saint has a very specific definition. If you ask a Protestant, some Protestants will say, well, we don't believe in saints. If you ask a Native American, they will talk to you about their ancestors. And so, it does depend on who you ask. In our Reformed tradition, the emphasis of this festival is on the ongoing sanctification that is making holy of all God's people. And while we may give thanks for the lives of particular 
people who glowed with a special light in ages past. We also give glory to God for the lives of ordinary people here on earth with us still. And so we give thanks for the lives of those who have died, and we pray that we too may be in the company of the saints, the faithful, in God's kingdom. In our passage from Luke today, we have a word, we have two words that kind of need to be scrubbed off and attended to because these words in our common culture mean something different from what Jesus intended. The word blessed or blessed, you may have seen hashtag blessed, means, oh boy, what a wonderful thing just happened to me. But I don't think that's what Jesus meant when he said blessed. I think what he meant is connected to God. And then woe is another word that comes in our text today. Some people will tell you that woe means cursed, but I don't think that's what Jesus meant. I think what Jesus meant was woe like W-O-A-H, like woe, like slow down. Caution ahead. Or one of my favorite New Testament scholars likes to say, yikes! And so, instead of saying blessed, I'm going to say connected. And instead of saying woe, W-O-E, I'm going to say woe. So listen now for the word of the Lord from Luke chapter 6. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Connected are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Connected are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Connected are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Connected are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, full, full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and you will weep. And woe to you when all speak well of you. For that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. But I say to you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Be connected with those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes away what is yours, do not ask for it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good, to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. 
If you lend to those from whom you expect to receive payment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. Instead, love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for God himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the word of the Lord. And so, if the blessed are the connected, that is, those who are connected to the divine or the holy or to God, it's not being poor or hungry that we're after, it's the connection. I think saints and poor people perhaps know that they are connected to God. Perhaps the hungry rely more on God than the filled or the full. Perhaps it is this connection to the divine that ultimately we are all seeking. And perhaps it is that connection that draws us here. I think so. And God desires that connection. In fact, God is the one who initiates that connection with us and for us. And God is the one who connects us to God's self. But we don't live in a connectional world. We live in a world of do your own thing and a world of be independent and a world of don't show fear, don't weep, don't let people know how you're feeling. I don't think that's what makes a saint. I think what makes a saint is this desire for connection. On the cover of your bulletin, there's a photo. It's a still that's taken from a TV series that you can only find on Hulu, I'm sorry. And it is for mature audiences, mostly because of language. So if there's a certain word you don't want to hear, I don't think you should see the show. But if you do see the show, the first few episodes are going to cause you to say, why did my pastor think I should watch this show? But as time goes on, you will come to see that these folks in this TV show, these young adults who call themselves the reservation dogs, are really all about connection. And in this particular particular photo, there's a young woman who has lots of questions And she goes to visit someone who prays with her. And suddenly she feels the communion of the saints right there with her. And she draws strength from that connection. 
We think of saints as those that the Catholic Church have decided are holy because they received or acted two miracles. One miracle is not enough. It has to be two. But there is a church in San Francisco called St. Gregory of Nyssa Episcopal Church. And in that church, there are 90 dancing saints icons of 90 dancing people who surround the worship space. The church writes this about their dancing saints. Our broad idea of sainthood comes both from the Bible and Gregory of Nyssa. The Hebrew concept of holiness originally had no moral content, but simply meant having God's stamp on you being marked and set apart as God's own. These people are also known as God's friends. And I'm not going to read them all because we would be here for too long, but I'm going to read a few and they may surprise you. Abraham Joshua Heschel, Heschel the Polish-born German theologian that I preached about in my first Candidating Sunday here with you, Andrei Rublev, the German, I mean the Russian Orthodox icon painter, and Frank, Black Elk, a holy man of the Ogala Sioux, Cesar Chavez, Charles Darwin, Desmond Tutu, Eleanor Roosevelt, Ella Fitzgerald, Emily Dickinson, Florence Nightingale, Fridor Dostoevsky, Gandhi, John Coltrane, John Muir, Lady Godiva, I think this one needs some explanation. <laughs> Lady Godiva's legend, her riding horseback naked through the streets of the town, were there to protest her own husband's new taxes that would strip the poor of everything, even the clothes off their back. And so her protest says to us, you have done this and it is your shame. I'm not ashamed of myself, for my body was created by God. Malcolm X, Margaret Mead, Martha Graham, Mary Magdalene, Queen Elizabeth I, Rumi, the Persian Sufi poet, Simone Weil, Sojourner Truth, the mother of Kublai Khan, Thomas Merton, Thurgood, Thur, Thur, Thurgood Marshall, William Blake, William Shakespeare, and four animals to remind us that God's work of creation extends to all creatures. And so, what does Thomas Merton, the great Catholic contemplative, say about becoming a saint? Just a few words. For me, to be a saint means to be myself. Our holiness will fulfill, not eradicate, our personalities. We will not become gods or goddesses. Rather, we will become more fully ourselves, human and still flawed, but closer to the people God desires us to become. And that's what this is all about. These young people working together, supported by the communion of saints, trying to become the people God created them to be.
trusting in the power of God to deliver you, let us make our prayers of intercession for God, saying, God, our strength. We pray for the church. Bless those who are despised because of their faithfulness to the gospel. Let their reward be great in heaven. God, our strength. We pray for the world. Bless those who are hungry because we fail to share our wants. Let them be filled with good things. Hear our prayer. We pray for this community. Bless those who are poor and living in the streets. Let them receive your kingdom. God, our strength. Hear our prayer. We pray for loved ones, especially Tavita, Cindy, and Gail. Bless those who are weeping in their sickness or sorrow. Let them laugh with joy again. God, our strength. Hear our prayer. Merciful and mighty God, as you are one, make us one with you through Christ Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to bring us back to you, and in whose holy name we pray. And let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The last time I was up here, I was told that I didn't speak loudly enough, so if I'm screaming this morning, you, you know why. I want to make sure everybody hears. Um, up until last night, uh, my better half was actually planning to give this talk, but he has come down with a pretty nasty cold, so um, unfortunately you are stuck with me instead. And um, I should also warn you that um, Pam asked me before the service started if I would help her to collect the offering today. So whether or not this works, I'm going to know in just a few minutes. <laughs> so, um, why do Jay and I give? Um, as I was thinking about it this morning, there were three things that come to mind. Um, first, things that are external to the church. So, I, I was a member of a Disciples of Christ church growing up um, with a much larger congregation than Covenant. And the level of outreach and community engagement um, was a fraction of what we have here. Uh, I, I've been fortunate to join uh, many other members of our congregation at the public awareness event in April outside the Texas Civil uh, Commitment Center in Littlefield, uh, the WTOS accountability session later that month to hear local candidates answer questions um, about their support um, for the most vulnerable members of our community, and in August at um, Love of Pride to demonstrate that we welcome and affirm uh, LGBTQ folks. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud of how many members of our covenant congregation turned out for these events. And it also is amazing to see um, the dollars that we give being put to such great uses by Covenant's witnessing household uh, to bolster our, our community partners like Lubbock Impact and also um, Open Door Love. Um, second things that are internal to the church. So Jay and I both grew up in churches that while not openly hostile to LGBTQ folks, certainly weren't uh, welcoming either. Um, however, other kids like us aren't, aren't so fortunate. So in fact, just this past summer in a Baptist church in the DFW area, a uh, pastor told his congregation during his um, sermon on Sunday morning, um, some things that I won't mention because the children are coming back into the congregation, but I think you can imagine what he called on his congregants to do to uh, members of the, the, the LGBTQ community. So imagine being a, a gay or a bi or a trans teenager forced by your family to attend such a church and then hearing that message on a Sunday morning, you know, no wonder suicide rates are, are so high among LGBTQ youth. So now imagine, and actually we don't have to imagine because it's reality, um, imagine attending a church that accepts and validates you as a human being, that, that conveys both explicitly and implicitly that God loves you exactly as you are. That's what we get to experience with Becky every single Sunday um, here at, at Covenant. So while seeing our financial gifts used for expenditures like staff salaries and electric bills and printing of the courier maybe isn't exciting as community outreach, um, the fact that this congregation even exists in West Texas is community outreach. 
and this building and all of you create a safe space for all of us who most need your, your love and support. And then finally, um, guilt. <laughs> but I mean this in a positive way, so bear with me. So, so Jay retired from the Air Force last year after more than 20 years of service. He moved from Clovis, New Mexico to Lubbock so that we could finally live together as a family. And he started a new business as a realtor in a, a community where he had very few connections. Um, he's been successful because he works very long hours, including evenings and weekends, in order to better serve his clients. Um, for me, in June, I started an administrative position at Texas Tech that is requiring far more time than I ever expected. Um, Cecilia and, and, and Brian um, can attest that I have missed as many witnessing and finance meetings as I've been able to attend because other things pop up on my schedule. And I know that Jay and I are not alone, right? Um, most of you are in the same situation that we are between jobs and families. There just aren't enough hours in the day to support Covenant's uh, mission through donations of our time. And maybe you feel guilty because when you see others in our congregation who are able to give so freely and generously, you wish that that could be you. And we wish that that could be us. But my feeling is that we shouldn't feel guilty. Um, we all support Covenant as we are able. So part of why Jay and I give is because gifts of time and gifts of money both are wonderful, right? And in fact, this congregation couldn't function if we didn't have both. So um, we encourage you to give however you are able to empower Covenant in um, continuing to spread God's love uh, in, in part of the state and the country that needs to hear this message the most. Amen. <laughs> I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Let us offer our lives to the Lord.
invite you to be seated. Friends, this is the Lord's table. It is not a Presbyterian table. And Christ himself invites all who trust in him to share the feast that he has himself prepared. And so, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks and praise, good and gracious God. You are the ancient and the eternal, reigning in glory over all the earth, calling the faithful to dwell in you forever. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs, with angels and archangels, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Blessed is Christ Jesus, who came to show us the kingdom of heaven here on earth, teaching us to love our enemies and to bless those who curse us. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude as we share this joyful feast, for great is the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup that this may be for us the real presence of Christ Jesus our Lord give us your spirit of wisdom and truth that we may know the power of your good news and receive an inheritance among the saints through Christ with Christ in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit we bless you God of glory now and forever and let God's people say amen and now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread. Of life. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus said, Come to me and never be hungry. Trust in me and you will not thirst. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite the elders to come forward.
friends, join with me in the prayer after communion as printed in your bulletin. God of glory, in this holy feast, you have made us one with Christ and with that great multitude of the faithful who hunger and thirst no more and worship night and day in your temple. Lead us in the paths of righteousness and guide us to the springs of the water of life until we join the choir of the redeemed, singing, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. of the one God, Spirit, Son, and Father be with you now and always. Alleluia. And give glory to God in all things. Amen.
we go. We'll see if uh, Mark can mute the stuff in the sanctuary. 